Bob, we're looking at a former MVP. The Braves won the World Series last year, and you're saying to yourself, there's no way the Braves would let this guy get away, right? Well, it's gotten to this point. They didn't sign him before the lockout, and Michael points out that there are are being a lot of connections made between him and the Yankees. It would be an unbelievable pickup for the Yankees. Of course, they'd want to have Freddie Freeman, his defense, his left-handed bat at Yankee Stadium. And when you flash back to last year, Rizzo was a terrific fill-in for them when Voigt was down. And then they were listening to trade offers about Voigt. Voigt's the only first baseman on the roster right now. I do think there's a chance that he looms as a trade chip. We should throw Olsen in the mix as well from the A's because the A's have pretty much made it clear that they would be willing to trade Matt Olsen. Brian Cashman engaged with the A's before the lockout began, and there wasn't a lot of traction moving back and forward on what the A's might want for Olsen. Now, you also have to look at it that um, Olsen's 28 years old. Freddie Freeman's 32. Uh, the Braves are reluctant, and he's a hometown hero there. Uh, they're reluctant to go six years. So if you go six years, you're taking him to 38 years old. And these decisions are not made in a, back, uh, a vacuum, guys, because you still, at the end of this year, you have to deal with, with Aaron Judge, and his age might be a factor as well. These all have to go into the equation now. If you could somehow ramp up a deal with the A's for Olsen, you could also look into getting Liriano because the Yankees might need themselves a center fielder, and you could get a guy like Sean Manaya. They can always use another pitcher. And then there's the elephant in the room, everybody. What are the Yankees going to do at shortstop? Would they go into that pool for Carlos Correa and spend the kind of money that he's going to demand? Will they go the short-term route, or will they move a Gio Urshela over to short and wait for Volpe to be ready in 2023? These are answers that are going to come to us maybe in the next day or so, because that's how quickly this stuff has to be solved. Yeah, and isn't that the crazy thing, is that you would say on the surface, well, Korea, Korea, even though it's a shortstop, at the price he's going to come at doesn't seem like a fit. So reapportion that money elsewhere. But you never know what's going to happen in these 24, 48 hours. He turned down a 10-year, $275 million deal from the Tigers. So again, you kind of know where the bar is set. Other shortstops like Seager and Semyon have already signed players who could play shortstop. I know Semyon can play second as well. But I will say this, in some conversations in the offseason, with Yankee officials and Yankee hierarchy, the way that they speak about Peraza and Volpe and the future of those two players leads me to believe that we are more likely to see an Urshela at shortstop or a stopgap shortstop while they wait for those two jewels in their system. As you said, Bob, and as Michael has said, this could all change with one phone call and there could be an attraction between the Yankees and a big player like Correa. But I came away from those conversations believing that they believe in their young guys and they're ready to wait.